but he's not on a deserted island. That's I know, the difference. That like, is the I, difference. Yeah. If I was on a deserted island, sure. Hi, and welcome to the Savage Podcast. I'm Rose, also known as Cheap Lazy Vegan on YouTube. And I'm Daniel, one of your favorite guest stars on Cheap Lazy Vegan's YouTube channel. We're two friends who love to talk about the latest trending topics. So get comfortable and join us while we give our savage take on just about everything. You are currently listening to the previous episode of this podcast, but if you would like to listen to this week's episode and get some exclusive content, go over to patreon.com slash the savage podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to this week's episode of the Savage Podcast. Hello, Ari. <laughs> Why do you laugh, Daniel? I don't know. I don't appreciate it. I don't know. It's been a, it's been a bit of a crazy weekend. Oh my god, Daniel moved. I did. I am officially a slave to the bank. <laughs> homeowner yeah so i got damn down your house it feel it feels interesting like <laughs> i don't know you just moved like two days ago literally two days ago the best part about moving is like i invested in like a really really nice bed <laughs> and, that's the best part yeah and let me tell you thank going god to- finally oh. can we talk about your old bed <laughs> no rose that's not my <laughs> so- <laughs> that's not my spare room bed so if I know, you ever I crash mean, you're sleeping I on know, that bed I, it is it belongs in the spare room let <laughs> me just tell you his bed you guys i don't know if we've made fun of you for this we, we, we okay. have yeah i mean i know in real life i have multiple times but i don't you know like to we... talk about my miniature furniture <laughs> yes. so, <laughs> it's like it's like you want me to make fun of <laughs> anyway <laughs> your face oh, i'm crying already okay mm-hmm. So Daniel's bed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what about my bed, Rose? Come on, just spit it out. It just, it's miniature. Okay, it was not miniature, guys. Okay. It was a double bed. So it was like, not a double. I think it was even a twin. But it was like. <laughs> Isn't that smaller than a double? I don't know which I'm one. Whatever, sure. whatever one's bigger than a double it or a twin, it was the bigger so one. so small. And it also looked like you got it in elementary school. <laughs> The funny thing is, though, I literally, the, the crazy thing is that was an upgrade for my bed that I had till I was like, like 18 because I used to just have like a single bed. How, I don't, like, this is where I'm like, how do you, how do you have a single bed? Like you are a tall man. Yeah, but it's not, the thing is, it's not about the length. But it's The length of like, beds are pretty much all the same. But guys, can we just like, come on. Get, do you think you can sleep in a single bed now? I did at my parents when I was staying there. I mean, yes, maybe. And how did it feel? It was fine. Yeah? I just couldn't sprawl out. You know what I mean? Like, I, I was kind of like just lying in the bed like this. Even when I had, because I had a single bed for a while as well. But mm-hmm. like, even when I had a single bed, I was like, this is kind of small. God damn it. You'd be a tiny woman. Or maybe we're just spoiled with the big beds. I know? think we are. I think you are especially. <laughs> <gasps> but now I have like the, honestly, I'm just so excited. I melted into Thank my God, bed, guys. I can't wait to see your adult size bed. Mm-hmm. Did I not send you a picture? <laughs> Well, I, I want to see it in person. Oh, sure, sure, sure. But now next, you need to change to a non-miniature couch. I know. That's the next step. <laughs> Baby steps, guys. Baby steps to get rid of my uh, miniature furniture. Oh, my God. And you know I can I fit ca- it all into my spare room. My miniature couch, my miniature bed. Does your miniature couch fit in your spare room? Probably will. If I want to. <gasps> oh, just my God. Like- your, your little spare room is going to be so miniature. It'll <laughs> be so cute. <laughs> Anyway, guys. <laughs> anyway. It's been a busy, busy exciting. weekend. Yeah. Um, you're very stressed, I'm sure. Or I'm sure a lot of it's, you know. A lot of the stress is gone. Yes. Honestly, the biggest thing, and I'm sure many people can relate to this, is actually like the moving process. Oh, my God. Moving is such a bitch. Yeah. And I rented a U-Haul. Oh, my God. How was that experience? Have you ever driven a U-Haul, Rose? I have not personally because oh God, Lord knows. I would <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's not get Rose behind the wheel of a U-Haul, okay? Yeah. But I remember um, Angela, my old roommate, she... <laughs> Did she rent a U-Haul? Oh, God, we, she's crazy. Yeah. We were at Costco one day, mm-hmm. you know, just buying normal things, you know. I don't know why we were at Costco. And then she like saw this couch. And I guess at this point, we didn't have a couch yet. I can't remember. Yeah. We just moved to the new place. And then she saw this couch and she like immediately was like, we need to get this couch. That day, she was like, we need to get it. But we don't have cars. Like, and this couch was big. Yeah. She's like, I'm going to go rent a U-Haul. <laughs> so we actually went and got the U-Haul. Grab the couch. I don't even know how we did this. <laughs> you guys are crazy. So she drove the U-Haul. Yeah. Was it a big U-Haul or a little one? I, I don't think. 
I'm sure it was it was a small one. Yeah, because like we were just moving the couch. You guys probably got like a little one. Yeah, because mine was yeah. like a pretty big truck. Oh my god! And you drove it. Yeah, and it, the, the the worst thing is I booked it for like the downtown location, but for some reason the the truck that the, that was available was like way in the south. So mm. I had to like go into the south. It wasn't that far south. It's like so by, annoying. Yeah, it was by Chinook though. So I drove down there. And then, oh, actually, my parents dropped me off. I picked up the yeah. U-Haul, and then I had to drive it back to my parents' place. Oh, my God. From down south. And I was, like, luckily, it was, like, really <laughs> early on a Saturday, so, like, there wasn't much traffic. But that thing is a fucking beast. Oh, my God. And you've never driven, like, a giant no, car. Never. I Oh, my God. I would be so stressed out. Yeah. It was, it was, I mean, to be fair, I did drive, like, when I went on that road trip years ago, we bought, like, a big van. Right. But that was even still much smaller. You know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. this was, like, like a U-Haul is, like, a Oh god, it was Big huge, and yeah. I have a new respect for truck drivers. Like, that <laughs> don't you have shit to get like scary. a different license to be a truck driver, or like to, yeah, to no, drive you do. a certain car? If you drive like a really big like semi truck, you have to have like a right. special license. Yeah, because it's like different. Like yeah. it's not the same as a car. It definitely isn't. I'm like, oh my goodness, sorry. <laughs> Coming into my alley, like where I'm living, it's like a really tight and really sharp turns. Oh no. So I was like, had to like, at one point I was like turning and I had to do like, kept reversing, trying to like pull into this thing. And I was like going oh, back and forth like god. this. Oh my god, I would die. Yeah, it was, it was an experience. Um, To be fair though, it's like a really reasonable way to move. Yeah. So because like, like, did you do one? It was one trip. One trip? Yeah. Okay, that's good. Fit that's everything good. fit in the U-Haul and then I yeah. just moved it to my new place. Okay, okay. So it made it a lot easier. Like it was just like very easy to... You know. Well, how did you move before? Um, borrowed my friend's truck. Like a truck truck. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, like getting a U-Haul like makes sense. Yeah. yeah. I think going forward though, because like this is going to be my place for like a long time, hopefully. Like I'm going to get some nice furniture, do all that kind of stuff. So the next time that I move, if and when I do, I'm going to hire movers. Yes. Hiring movers is, mm-hmm. that's what I usually do. Yeah. <laughs> because it's just like, well, I used to like get friends and stuff, but it's like, mm-hmm. I don't know. These people are professionals. <laughs> exactly. You know, they have equipment that makes it easier and they can do it. And um, yeah, even when I was moving here, God, even the movers were like, fuck my life. <laughs> really? You didn't even have that much stuff when you moved here. I had so much shit. Are you kidding? Did you actually? Because I'm thinking now. I, were you being sarcastic? Just no, because I'm thinking now. Look, you have this. You have the Oh my the God. I don't know what. Daniel, I literally, when I was packing at my old place, Cause like me and Angela shared that apartment yeah, and that apartment was like not that big. Like mm-hmm. it wasn't, it wasn't ju- like tiny, but yeah. it was like, it was small. Right. I was like, how did I fit all this shit in here? I actually, now that I'm remembering, do you I, remember all my boxes? I remember coming here and being like, how did all this fit in your <laughs> tiny ass apartment with Seriously? Angela? Seriously, I'm like, I don't understand. I mean, um, to be fair, the apartment was full to the brim. Yeah. It was very full. Like every door you'd open, yeah. it would like explode <laughs> out of the closet. So, okay. Let's not do this. Okay. That's so rude. Anyway. <laughs> All right, you guys. Um, we had some technical difficulties because Rose can't sit still. And. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be rude as hell. I'm sick, my friends. Okay. I'm getting over an illness. And hopefully I'm not going to be sick by association. But well, we'll you never get sick. Out. I call Daniel the Iron Man. He never gets sick. True. Um, uh, <laughs> like, I don't think I've ever seen you actually sick. I've been sick. I definitely have. Like, when's the last time you were sick? And don't say COVID. Okay, <laughs> COVID you were like. <laughs> Before sick. that, it was a while. It's been a while. I literally don't remember you ever being sick. Hmm. Well, now you know what's going to happen. I'm going to get fucking sick. <laughs> so mark we'll my see. words. So um, are there p- Patreon shout outs? There is, oh guys. God. So uh, let's see where we left off. For oh. those of you that don't know, we do have a Patreon. Um, It's patreon.com slash the Savage Podcast, um, where there's a lot of great content. You guys get um, episodes a week earlier than the public. Also, all the episodes are ad free, and you get an exclusive episode every single month. That episode is just exclusive to our little Patreon community. Yee. Yee. And you get a little shout out you in do. our podcast. So today, I want to say thanks to, oh my God, how do you say that? Yamane. Yamane. And also, Yamane. And like also it. to Sarah. Thank you guys so much yeah. for joining our little family. Mm-hmm. And yeah, once again, welcome, welcome. make sure you join if you haven't. Yeah. Patreon.com slash the Savage Podcast. And you get, you know what else? You also get access. Like if you join now, mm. you get access to all of our legacy Patreon exclusive episodes. Legacy. God damn. Yeah. I like that word. It'd be our legacy content. <clears throat> 
I lack our legacy content. You know, we got some good stuff. We got oh, some good shit on there. We got some good, there. good content and, in there, you guys. And this week, or this week, this month, we are going to do an exclusive <clears throat> episode where we're going to film a mukbang and we are going to spill some tea. Oh, we might just drink. I oh, thought yeah. about this mukbang idea and yeah. I was like, some people don't like like eating sounds. True. So I feel like, or maybe, I don't know. What do you guys think? Okay, let me know. But I really like your cooking, so... <laughs> Oh, I'm supposed to cook for you? God damn, <laughs> no. motherfucker. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but we'll see. Yeah. Let I'm, us know because like if we use these mics, it's going to yeah. be like very... In your you face. Know, like, like, <laughs> like I don't mind eating sounds, but like yeah. some people really hate it. So <clears throat> true. Anyway, we might just drink, but like let us know if you guys want us to do, you know. Wait, what are, we, gonna, what are we talking about? We're going to spill some tea. Oh, God dang. You know, we're going to spill some tea of oh, some certain like, <laughs> YouTubers? YouTubers that we've been able to have the pleasure of meeting. <laughs> In our, um, uh-huh, uh-huh. in our, well, that I've met all it's exclusively very through you, but yes. you know, yeah. it's, it's interesting because like, I feel like in the beginning of my YouTube journey mm-hmm. is when I actually met a lot more YouTubers because we were all, we creators. were living in London yeah and at the time it was actually cu- quite like fun because mm-hmm. a lot of people, um, were in London starting mm-hmm. YouTube at the same time. Like everyone was kind of like, it was like a really cool little time. It was really cool. And I kind of miss it. I should have started my channel at that time. Oh my you God. Know? You totally should have. I know. I could have been you in this just, You know, trend. piggybacks off all of us. I could have. <laughs> I was joking there, but <laughs> you know, you know, um, that... yeah, you should have. I don't know why you didn't. Oh, well, too late now. Anyway, um, <laughs> I don't know why. Cause like you try to edit YouTube videos. I'm like, damn. <laughs> You know what, you know what, Rose? Even this podcast, God. I'm like, Daniel, can you edit just this one part out? And of course, leaves it in. <laughs> Every time. I like to keep things exciting. Oh, my God. <laughs> so. Anyway, so we're going to jump into the stories. Mm-hmm. So the first story, actually. I really need to hear about the story. Um, Well, there's a couple. There's one that I know Rose is really looking forward to, which we're going to deep dive into that one in a minute. Um, is that not the first one? No. God damn it, Daniel. I like to, you know, like you can't just give it all away right okay, away. Okay, fine, fine. Some of us aren't like you on a first date, okay? <gasps> <No>. <laughs> just kidding. Excuse me? Just kidding. Just kidding, guys. The shade. The shade of it all. <laughs> um, Actually, the funny thing about this story is one of my coworkers brought it up to me and was like, hey, have you heard of this story? Blah, blah, blah. Or this like Instagram thing. And then I saw it again, like on social media and stuff. So, I mean, it's like a non-story, but it's kind is of a this story. The, is this the OnlyFans? Yes. yes Did I've you heard hear this. about this? Yes, I've heard this. Yeah. It is just... It's fucking crazy. So, the story is, Bad Baby mm-hmm. shares alleged receipts on making $50 million Last year, yeah. on OnlyFans in one year? Yes. So you guys, if you don't know, <laughs> Bad Baby is the girl that goes, catch me outside. How about that? <laughs> that was on Dr. Phil. Like, are you not there, mind blown? There are no words. I know. Like I, when I heard this, I was like, cause I remember we did a story where when she first initially released OnlyFans. Well, yeah. Cause there was like, there was a little bit of a scandal. Cause if you remember, she had just freshly turned 18, right? Right. She turned 18 drops an OnlyFans account and then and makes l- millions and literally in a month made a million dollars like it was crazy and everyone was like oh my god and also people were like that's kind of creepy that like you well just- I mean are we surprised no that you just <laughs> turned 18 and all these people were like waiting for that button to like be able to subscribe um, but it's like what do people expect when you have certain like rules like that it's like yeah. of course I mean honestly it's stupid I mean it's needed we need these legal you know mm. You know, obviously we need a legal age and everything. I fully believe that. But at the same time, it's like to think that it's not going to be, you know, people aren't going to be like waiting for people to turn 18 because the, the fact of the matter is they're not really going to look that different. 17, no. 18, 19, 20. No. They're not that much more emotionally mature. 17, 18, 19, 20, even 16, whatever. Yeah. You really don't look that different. Like yeah. I didn't look that different from like 15 to like 20. Like yeah. it wasn't, you don't mature like people like anyway. That's just like my little mm-hmm. point there. Like a side note. It's like, I don't, yes, it is creepy, I guess. But also like, I don't know. People are creepy. Yeah, people <laughs> like, are I don't creepy. know. At least they're being legal. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Fuck. But also, I mean, honestly, <laughs> it, if I knew that if I did an OnlyFans, like if it was guaranteed and I knew that I would make 50 million in that one year for doing you an do OnlyFans. It? Fuck yeah. You do <laughs> one year, you could retire. God damn, Daniel. 
Like that is why don't, why don't you do it? God damn, guys, are gonna subscribe <laughs> to my OnlyFans. Um, and the thing with OnlyFans, I mean, what does she supply? Is what I want. That's to know. the thing because some people don't do full nudity and stuff like in their OnlyFans. Like it's right. certain because like some of it is like you get content like. Like not quite. I mean, it's all sexualized. I think most of it, but yeah, it doesn't I think necessarily most of it mean, is sexual. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, some it, yeah, people kind of you know they do whatever they're comfortable with. Like I, th- I think some people do like full on porn. Oh yeah, hundred yeah, yeah, percent. Yeah, do. like so. I don't know what she does. Yeah. I assume for people to pay this much and continue because mm-hmm. it's a subscription service. So yeah. like. For people to continue to pay, I'm assuming that she has some pretty good fans and maybe she has some good content. Yeah, okay? she must she must have good content. She must she's, be doing, she's you know. She's got repeat consumers. And also where she made... pornography. I know, where she made a lot of money though because she... Okay, so what happened was she said that she made 50 million on OnlyFans. Is Every, that her? Yeah. Everyone Goddamn was... Goddamn Photoshop. Every, I know. Every, that does not even look like her. I know, right? Like, seriously. Everyone was like <laughs> doubting that she made this money and was like, oh, you're, you're lying, blah, blah, blah. So she's like, you know what? I'm going to show you the read receipts because <laughs> everyone wants those read receipts, you know? <laughs> So she sends a screenshot or does like, they're called read receipts, right? You always, you always call them read receipts. Yeah. I think they're just called receipts. Okay. Receipts. Everyone wants why, to see receipts, you right? Them read receipts? You know what, Rose? <laughs> So, so it breaks down her earnings and it shows, okay, this is where she, she made her monies, right? So subscriptions totaled $16 million roughly. So that's what people pay for subscriptions. Tips. Paid a hundred and so I guess she gets tips for her content as well. Uh-huh. One hundred and sixty one thousand dollars. Oh my god! But this is the real kicker: messages. So I'm assuming like private messages that people can send you, or maybe you send them messages. I don't know. Twenty five point five million dollars from messages. You guys, when people say work hard, make money, that's bullshit. This is <laughs> okay? such. It, I, this is such a crock of shit. Like exactly. it's bullshit. The world is not fair. And that is the world we've created. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's called capitalism. It ain't fair. You got a girl here, just turn 18, freshly turn 18, mm-hmm. doing whatever content. And you know what? Like, good for her. Okay. Yeah. But for her to make 50 million, <laughs> this actually makes me kind of mad. I can't believe it. Making 50 million. It makes me bad, but also like you can't blame her. No, of course. You know what I'm saying? She's playing the, she's playing the game. Yes, well, you know, but, like don't fucking tell me. That like anything is fair in the world. <laughs> okay. I know. Nothing is fair. Um, like it's crazy. I mean, who like, okay. Like what? Why her though? I don't know. Like I'm shocked. I know. That's what I'm also shocked about. I'm like, but this just goes. Maybe she does some crazy ass shit. You know, I feel like she, like she has no shame. Like she probably has like no um, limits, you know? Who knows? I'm not about to subscribe to the OnlyFans <laughs> to find out, guys. Sorry, but I'm like, not. Like, how much does she charge, man? I have no idea. Like, I've never even actually been on the OnlyFans site. Like, so I, like, I don't either. I'm like, why would you, like, you know? And also, guys, like. there's free porn oh out my there. God, I know. This is my exact <laughs> point. Like, why are you paying for this shit? Like, there is so much free porn I don't on the know. web. I think people like the kind of idea that they're, like, connecting with somebody. Like, interacting. Exactly. Like, they have this false sense of, like, they're interacting directly with this person. This is very true. Uh-huh. Like, you're right, because it's, like, you subscribe and then you can send them private messages i guess mm-hmm. pay extra for that up to 25 million sure. fucking dollars um, but that's the thing. when you have so many people though it doesn't even feel like a community anymore like well, i can see it. if it's like maybe a hundred like you know like a small group mm. or even up to a thousand or something yeah. but you know when you're when you're this when you have so many people i know it's like you're just you know it's just you're insane. just a website at that point <laughs> no you are <laughs> like, and, and guaranteed the thing is at the end of the day by at, the, at that point, she has a team managing it, right? So, or she'll have somebody else. Of course, of course. She's not responding to those messages. So it's like they're actually like paying for something they're not even actually receiving. Do you know what I mean? If, yeah, yeah. If, if they're, they're thinking they're getting an exactly. interaction with her, she probably doesn't even see half the shit. No, I don't think so. Like she's probably just like, "Yep, here's my face." How much here's content my... is she putting? Like, I kind of want to subscribe just to see. Oh god damn! Should I, I should I do some deep dive? Research? I, don't, I don't. I don't think you want to deep dive into that. Let me but tell like, you. What if it's like super juicy? Oh my god, this could be like a Patreon exclusive. I could like talk about what I saw. <laughs> and like, i'll just like subscribe to like you know it's a business expense only fans yeah. and then you <laughs> subscribe to a few different only fans and then we'll talk about guys should i do it <laughs> there's so you know what you know what I, i'm just scared that you're gonna get scarred for life rose i might and then you're gonna be tainted but you know what i already saw two girls one cup oh my god so <laughs> <laughs> let's that, after that. seeing that i feel like i can handle anything true 
that that was old too. That was what that, year was that? Like that I remember, so I was so ago. fucking scarred. But wasn't that? Didn't that happen in like when we were in university? I think so. I was. I think I was like eighteen. Yeah, because it was like my innocent eyes, guys. Yeah, it's like it, it's definitely. I still remember the moment. Did you watch it? No, I never saw it. Oh my god, and I, I remember never the want moment. to. Because I didn't know what it was. Okay, everyone's like, "Oh my god, two girls, one cup." Like, blah, blah. so I was like, "I want to see what this is about." <laughs> I had no idea what it was, and then my friend Leslie was over. And then she was like, okay, you need to watch it. She's like, I refuse to watch. I don't know if she watched it already yeah, yeah, yeah. or she just didn't want to watch it. Or she just knew what it was about. And was Basically, like, so she shit. was standing in front of me because, you know, like when I don't know if you guys were ready, like around in this mm. era. But basically, this was like the time when people would post their reactions to watching this. Do you remember this? Yes. So they would film their reaction as they're watching this. And if you guys don't know what Two Girls, One Cup is. We don't need to go into details. <laughs> well, let everyone me explain knows. A li- no, some people don't know, Daniel. Everyone knows. Okay, if you don't know, <laughs> basically, there's two. Gr- it's a it's a adult film. <laughs> if you can even call it that, and it's two girls that basically. <laughs> let's not. Let's not there's say some, we did. Basically, there's some defecation involved. Yes. And uh, it, it's kind of like a mukbang. <laughs> uh, that was disgusting, Rose. <laughs> you never ever need to. <laughs> need to do that again. That's so gross. Anyway. <laughs> so I'm watching this. My friend is watching me watch it. Daniel's dying. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's okay. I'm watching this. My friend is watching me watching this. And I literally was just like. <gasps> I should have filmed myself. You should have. Anyway. You would have gone viral. Um. <laughs> anyway. So maybe I'll subscribe, you know. Yeah. Find out what her OnlyFans is all about. Yeah. And how she's making 52 fucking million dollars. Like there has to be a reason like it can't just be regular you know adult but also content also the thing is too like to your point like not to sound like a dick but like <laughs> why her do you know what i mean like, yeah, like she had her moment on a uh, dr phil i don't get so crazy I, i'm like that was like what six seven years ago oh, probably even longer I can't and remember. i think she was like 14 so what is it she's like 18 oh, oh maybe sure. it was like yeah, four yeah. or five years mm-hmm, ago mm-hmm. she had her moment she popped off on dr phil like after that i'm like why are we still then talking about her? I think she was like her? a singer or yeah, like a rapper. She, she tried to be a rapper, I think. <laughs> she so. was like kind of successful. Yeah, I think maybe. Which is kind of weird for, I don't know, it's weird, but whatever. Yeah. You know what? Good for her, whatever. Um, But then I'm just like. Yeah. What the fuck? Like. I know, I don't, I'm, I'm very confused. But like, I mean. I didn't even know she was like a sex symbol. Like, okay, cool. Apparently she is. And people want to catch her outside. Oh my God. <laughs> for a different reason. They really want to catch her outside. Fucking hell. Well, you know, going along with this kind of internet phenomenon, we'll kind of skip stories, but the one that you really want, really, well, really want to talk about. the reason why is because, so before this, we were having technical issues and the Daniel saved the episode file and he named it Fictosexual. <laughs> oh, this is, this is related to the story I sent you. Yes, <laughs> very much so. Okay, you guys, this is just sad. But you please. Okay. So basically, this is a new thing, guys. I've never heard of this word before. I'm learning so much on this podcast. <laughs> I know, right? You know, demi- demisexual, <laughs> pansexual. What's demisexual again? Demisexual is like, remember, it's like you're attracted to someone's mind. Like the intelligence and okay, stuff. Okay. That's like most people. Let's continue. Well, apparently not. Apparently you have to be a demisexual. A demi? Demi. Are you a demisexual? I am. Really? Um, and I think I'm a fictosexual. I think you are as well. So a fictosexual is somebody that fantasizes and becomes in love with a fictional character, which I could see Rose doing. <gasps> with um, who? With what? I don't know, Rose. Some Something, some kind of, <laughs> you got some kind of kink going on back there, okay? Um, no, I'm just kidding. But anyway, so this, the title of this story is A Fictosexual Man Married a Hologram Bride and Now Struggles but now struggles to bond with her. So <laughs> wait, is this the same story that I sent you? Yeah. It's not the same story. It is. Yeah. So basically was that one about hologram though. Yeah. Was it a doll? It is, but it's like a mixture. So basically he's dating. So this guy in Japan, um, he's dating a hologram, a hologram fictional pop character, basically who's a 16 year old girl with turquoise hair. Um, and she's, her name is, what is it? Dating. Hatsune Miku and basically up until 2017 he was like he didn't have that much interaction with her or whatever else after 2017 um they the I don't know the game (laughs) gaming company or whatever she's from um they came out with this new device where you could like interact with her and it was like a hologram and whatever else um okay oh so it's a 
fictional computer synth- synthesized pop singer? Yes. Okay, continue. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! Oh no! I can't. Yeah. Okay. So Just picture you guys. Oh, it's so sad. I and mean, like, he's not a bad-looking guy. It's not about that. I know. It's so crazy. I know. I know. Okay, so let me read this. Okay. Okay. <sighs> okay. Try not to judge. No. So it said he was dating Hatsune Miku. Okay. Mm-hmm. Depicted in pop culture as a 16-year-old with turquoise hair. Mm-hmm. For a decade before they had an unofficial wedding ceremony in 2018. Mm -hmm. Kondo, which is the guy, one of the many who identify as fictosexual or someone who is sexually attracted to fictional characters. Like yourself, Rose. (laughs) I think you fit in this community. (laughs) I'm just kidding. Spent 2 million yen or about $17,300 on the, on the what? The nuptials. The 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 marriage. Yeah. And his family did not attend. Mm-hmm. Surprise, surprise. So, okay. so basically, he has been married for married for four years. Now, what has happened though is, I guess the software company or whatever that makes the hologram, they've stopped doing like upgrades or something like this. Where basically now, with because of this technological hurdle, he's no longer able to interact. Like she can't speak anymore or something. Oh my god! Yeah. This is so bad. Yeah. And he says, while he acknowledges his relationship might be odd, he understands Miku isn't a real person. It doesn't change his feelings for her. He said since falling in love with her in 2008, he was finally able to interact with her for the first time in 2017 thanks to Gatebox, a $1,300 machine that allowed owners to interact with characters via holograms and even unofficially marry them. But now his four-year marriage took a turn when support for Gatebox software was eliminated, (laughs) meaning that Kano could no longer speak with his wife. Kondo insists it hasn't lessened his feelings. Okay, I'm sorry. You know what? You know what? How? That? How? Mm-hmm. Oh my god. There was a little piece in here though, um, where basically he he I think he worked at a school or something, and he had some like, like he worked there, and some of the ladies that worked with him like bullied him or something like this, okay. and then it, then he took that as he can't have a relationship with with. People, oh my god and decided that this is his only, only but why is this like such a phenomenon in you're right he's not bad looking at all no like he's not like, a bad looking guy yeah, like not saying cute. that if you're bad looking course, you, yes. you're gonna do this but, but it's but... like <sighs> i'm so torn with this because like a part of me is like is it really harmful like you know i think these... it is oh, oh okay oh god damn okay tell do well, I don't know. Speak. Okay, the thing is, he's saying in this article, he's like, you know, it really helped him with his depression. Yeah, see, I read that and I was like, oh. And, and it, he first became familiar with her after bullying at work caused him to become depressed, um, despite finding it a difficult blah, 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 blah. Um, I stayed in my room 24 hours a day and watched videos of Miku the whole oh, time. Okay. So so I, I, I think, I didn't mean to jump so quickly and say like, <laughs> you know, this is really detrimental and this is terrible. But I think there's something to be said about um, how this impacts your ability as a society or as a person to like interact with people oh, and 100%. and also like we're just like naturally social beings like we're not solitary creatures and it's just there's something so off-putting like not off-putting that's the wrong word I, I don't blame him like he, he he felt depressed and this was his outlet where you know there was someone there that you know in his mind you know, fulfilled that void and Mm. and helped him pull him out of depression. What's wrong with this though, is like, I think that he's sacrificing other relationships because of this. And also I think, you know, in terms of like human development and your own growth, like you need to be having these interactions. Like, and I think it's, it's tough because this is like really big in Japan. Why is it so big in Japan? Like I need to know everything. Mm Mm-hmm. Like it's such a problem in Japan Mm -hmm. and you're right. Like I, I agree. Like, is it, the fact that it's becoming a phenomenon is like very scary and because sad. it's so sad because it's like, what is wrong with this society that people are, are feeling like they literally cannot even talk to other human beings. I know this is the thing. And I'm not saying that, you know, marriage is the be all end all and he should get married to somebody of else. Of course not. But this has, this comes more, there's more to it's this. It's not where, just about marriage. Exactly. It's like the, most of these people, they're not interacting with other, other pe- people exactly in they're they're really like isolating themselves mm-hmm. and keeping themselves to this you know fictitious relationship and it is one-sided like you're not getting you know it's like those people that like 
I don't know. They just spend all their time on the internet. Like they literally, yeah. you know, on like YouTube, with like YouTube, all these different like media things. And then they think that they are like developing relationships with the creator, for example, yeah. when it's like, it's very one-sided Yeah. and it doesn't help your relationships in real life, mm-hmm. you know? And I, I think there's something scary about our society that you're right. Like what is driving people to feel like they can't reach out to other people or have that yeah. like network and I do think this is happening, maybe not, we're not seeing this maybe in Canada, but like the idea of community and the idea of, you know, not even just marital relationships, but like relationships um, in a community, it, even in Canada, it's like kind of digressing like yeah. in a sense, like how many people know their neighbors nowadays? How many people, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's like, we're, we're kind of getting away from that community model more, I feel like. Oh, hundred mm-hmm. percent. So oh God, I don't. This is like, have you seen that movie? Like, is it called Her with like Joaquin Phoenix? I haven't seen that one. But like, you know, you do know what it's about. It's basically like this. I haven't kind seen of. it. I haven't heard so, about it either. So like, I, I haven't watched it for years, yeah. but it's basically a movie where this man like falls in love with his software that like speaks to him. Yeah. And then like, I mean, that's like the premise basically. Yeah. So it's basically like her, but like in real life. Mm. And it's like, and what I'm thinking is, Sure. Like the thing is, it's better than him being, I guess, completely depressed. alone and depressed. Yeah. I mean, he is alone, but he feels he gets this artificial kind of sense of connection. Mm. So it's it's better than complete isolation. Yeah. But it's really not much better because like we're talking about if the technology fails, then what? Yeah. And also it's it's like, again, you're you're still by yourself. Ultimately. Exactly. You're still by yourself. Like no one is there. Yeah. And it's. It's so sad. Why mm-hmm. is it happening in Japan? I need to know. <laughs> but I wouldn't say it's just like, I mean, obviously but Japan is an extreme case. It and is an extreme case. All yeah. these stories, all these stories of people having like relationships with dolls and relationships with like, yeah. uh, you know, f- fictitious holograms and even people that like borrow boyfriends and girlfriends, like rent a boyfriend day. Yeah. That's all from Japan. I know. It's kind of crazy, but like it's, it's. It's scary. Like, I mean, we talked about this in another episode yeah. we, and we joked and laughed about this, but like one of the stats was like talking about like male virginity or something right. between the ages of like 20 and 30. And it's a lot higher than most people would anticipate. Right. And again, I'm not saying like we should all be super promiscuous and stuff, but a lot of the guys were indicating there's, they're having a harder time, like connecting with women and like talking to ladies yeah. and, or, or other people in general, not just like heterosexual, but homosexual relationships as well. And I was just like, Oh God, this is We're like, fucked. This is like weird, we you know? We fucked, man. God damn. Because in some ways, this could be like a warning. Like Japan is like potentially a warning mm. as to what our society could potentially become like. Yeah. Because Japan, we've always seen as like very technologically advanced. Yeah. And they are technologically advanced. And they're very like, you know, they're very good at coming up with like virtual reality. and yeah. shit. But even the idea of virtual reality, like the whole metaverse, like all that shit, that kind of shit scares me. Like, yeah. We shouldn't be excited about this. Yeah. I really, it's terrifying. Exactly. I seem to remember. I don't know if it was about the, because there is something called the metaverse, right? Yeah. Because we were talking about that, like Facebook. Yeah. Wasn't there like some, I don't know if it was a movie or if it's like a real story that I saw, guys, but it was talking about something that like basically like lived their life in like virtual reality. Like they would wake up in the morning and like, that's the first thing that they would do. They would go into turn like, on the virtual reality. Yeah, thing? and I'm like, there is something seriously wrong. Oh with my that. god! Like uh, that's so. And I feel like we're going in that direction. I know. Like I saw this thing about, um, you know, fuck, what was it? Maybe it was Facebook or something where they were doing, um, like fitness classes, but it would only it would be like some kind of like virtual reality fitness class, but like in your home, so you don't actually have to go to a fitness class. Yeah. And I feel like, and I think with COVID, we kind of like almost got fucked over even more. Yeah. Because we got so used to just being interacting at home. At home. Mm. And in some ways it's nice, but at the same time, it is worrisome. Yeah. Because I mean, again, it's replacing human interaction, like mm-hmm. saying, okay, well, yeah, th- it's great to be doing fitness and stuff, but part of like fitness as well, you can, you go to the gym, you meet people, there's yeah. like communication, at least yeah. somewhat that happens. Even I go to like a, a fitness class. I don't know everyone in my class, but I'll go say hi and like, yeah. you know, just randomly chat to people and you get that sense of community almost. Whereas like, if you're just doing it online, you don't really get that as much. Like it's yeah. going to be like a, I don't know. And I, I think there's a time and a place, but I think when we're leaning on it too, too much. We're so isolated. Like it's yeah. actually fucked. This is fucked. 
Yeah. And it's actually scary. And yeah. I can see it happening to other countries. Oh, 100%. Um, I do think Japan is a very unique culture. And there are cultural reasons why this is happening as well. It's not just like technology. Yeah. But at the same time, like it is like a, it is kind of like scary. And I feel like it is definitely a warning sign. It's a sign to say, okay, guys, like, and again, nothing wrong. Like this guy... Uh, this oh. gentleman, you know, he was feeling depressed. This was an outlet for him. It helped him with his depression and stuff. And he kind of just went along with it. But like, I think that there's something innately wrong with our society. If that's how someone feels, they can pull themselves out. Do they out. have friends? Like, I need to know. Well, that's that's what I don't understand. Like, I, I think, you know, I, yeah. It's Should just... I start dating a hologram? No, Rose. <laughs> I'm just joking. What are you going to get out of that? I have no idea. What is he getting out of this? Well, I mean, because companionship. how are you even having is a companionship? How are you having a conversation? This reminds me of uh, Castaway. Oh yeah, with the coconut. <laughs> with the coconut, it's, was it even a coconut? I think sure. it was a volleyball. Oh, maybe a volleyball. And then I think that it might have been stuck to a coconut or okay. something. Okay. It was Wilson. <laughs> Oh God! Did you not? Oh, you didn't watch Castaway. I haven't seen <gasps> it. Daniel, I'll watch it's it. It's a classic. I'll watch it at some point. Okay, oh God, God damn, Rose, so calm good. down. Like anyone else, cry when he lost Wilson. You know he lost Wilson, right? If well, now, now you've ruined the movie for me, Rose. So I might as well not even watch it. Rose <laughs> is giving these spoilers here, where he's like trying to. He, if you guys haven't seen Castaway, I mean, you've all seen it, okay? Except me. <laughs> it's basically a story where um, Tom Hanks. He's on a flight. Mm. The flight crashes. He lands on a deserted island by himself and then he has to survive. Okay. So he's like lives there for years or whatever. And then he, because he needs human interaction or he needs, you know, companionship. Mm. He like starts talking to a volleyball. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Like he draws like a face on volleyball and then he becomes Wilson. And then eventually when he tries to escape, he takes Wilson with him, Mm -hmm. loses Wilson, and he fucking cries his eye. God, the way Tom Hanks cried when losing Wilson. Fucking tears, man. Does it touch your soul, Rose? I cried. like I have never cried so hard for a volleyball. (laughs) (laughs) See, then we can can sympathize sympathize with uh, this guy dating Miku. Yeah, but he's not on a deserted island. That's the difference. I know. That is the difference. If I was on a deserted island, sure. Yeah. Okay? But like... But maybe he feels like he is on a deserted island. And that's the it's sad a societal part, issue. Like yeah. it's not his fault. Yeah. Because it's obviously like a pattern developing here. Mm-hmm. And instead of people feeling like, oh, I need, I can fix this, or like I can get some help, mm. I can you know maybe take some social. People have like social anxiety. I think that's the biggest yeah. problem. So many people have social anxiety. It's true. Like, and it's getting worse and worse. God like it. Damn. I feel like it wasn't like a huge thing before, but now. Oh no! I think it's I been it's been it, a growing thing. Oh, because. Imagine the the thing is it's a muscle, okay? Socialization is a muscle, just like anything else, okay? Yeah. Most things people are like, "Oh, how do you become more confident?" You just live life and you mm. do things, okay? If you stay at home and do nothing, you're not going to be confident in anything mm. except for staying home and doing nothing. When you go outside and talk to people slowly, mm. you're going to become more and more comfortable just having a conversation with people. Yeah, cuz you just get used to it. that that exactly. fear comes down of being like, "Oh, yes. hey, how's it going? What's going on?" Exactly. Yeah. Because like imagine like I don't know when I first like was like a server I was like nervous to like say oh hi yeah me too to customers like do, like that's crazy to me now yeah and then you get used to it you mm-hmm. get so used to it. just like hey how's your day going exactly. like well, yeah it becomes second nature yeah so and when you're I guess when you grow up in a mm. world where everything is like technology 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 mm. and you're only communicating on like. I don't know, social media. Yeah. This is why I think it's like actually really good for people like that are going through school. We're not even just going through school, but just at some point in your life, work in the service industry. Right. Be customer facing. Yeah, so yeah, I feel yeah. like that's something that True. does really help people. It forces you to like actually have to interact with people. Exactly. And then at that point you're like, okay, actually it's not that scary. Like I feel exactly. like you do you know, it over and over again. Yeah. And then you're like, okay, it's fine. It's yeah. like riding a bike. The first time you get on, you're going to fall and, Whatever. You're going to be nervous. Yeah. You do it over and over again and then you're going to eventually learn. Yeah. And the problem is we, I guess we don't as a society value those things anymore. So we don't teach our kids anymore. I don't know. Maybe that this is just Mm -hmm. my, I don't know, theory. (laughs) But like we're not teaching our kids really to like talk to people. (laughs) I don't know. Yeah. And even at school, maybe they're just on their phones. Like I don't know how schools look nowadays. Exactly. Like it's kind of crazy. Like apparently kids are afraid to talk on the phone. Yeah. Like, they're afraid to talk on the phone. <laughs> like, what? I know, because they're, like, they're like used to, like... Texting. I know. Or, like, 
if they want to order food, they can do it on an app. Yeah. They could do it online. They don't have to talk to people. No. Whereas, at least with us, if we wanted to order a pizza, we had to call them. We used to have to. Now <laughs> yeah, we don't. Yeah, we used to have to call them. Not, not anymore. Yeah. But it's like, that's fucked. That is fucked up. Mm-hmm. Rose, they'd be fucked up as hell. So basically, kids are fucked. Like, what are they going to do? God dang. I don't know what the answer is, guys. I, <laughs> I just really think don't. this is definitely becoming a more and more of an issue, though. And I think the generation below us as well, like oh my with, God. The, with this like texting culture and like this, you know, really TikTok kind of culture where it's like I know. quick content, quick everything. Yeah, they're going to be have no attention to like no attention <laughs> concentration, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and they're going to have really big social anxiety. Yeah, like I know it's, it's going to be fucked. So, what's the solution? I don't know, guys. Let's move to Denmark and start a commune. Oh God! I think I think honestly, <laughs> starting to create more like community. Did we spaces, talk about though? this? We talked about this, right? About Denmark. Denmark and, and the commune. Okay, okay wait. Damn. It's not a commune. Is it called a commune? I don't know. Is a commune where a lot of people live together? I think so. <laughs> or did I just make that up? You might have made it up, but you know, no, no. I'm happy to. Move I've to- talked about this. So in Denmark, I, well, it, I think it started in Denmark, yeah. but it might be a thing in other places now too. Okay. But they would have these community, community. Um, like not a community housing, but like neighborhoods yeah. where, yeah, it's like a community housing sort of thing where everyone has their own place or like maybe some pl- some people share. I don't yeah. know. But like, you know, you can have your own like home, but then you live in this like community where it's like designed that way, where mm-hmm. there's like, you know, communal spaces yeah. and there's like a big kitchen hall. And one of the themes is that like each household like cooks for everyone like one day of the week. So like you would take turns cooking. Yeah. But then everyone eats together. And it can be like, it's kind of like, imagine like a really nice old folks like community. Yeah. But for not just old folks. Interesting. So it's like people, have we not talked about this? I think we have. Yeah. No, <clears throat> I think like, we have. Yeah. So it's like, it could be different generations, right? Mm. Like some people, some kids, I was like watching a video about this. Like some kids are like born into the, the in, in these like, it, it sounds like a cult when we say commune, but like, yeah. it's just like a community. Some mm. kids are like born there. And they like live there and they're just like, yeah, like, you know, if I fall, like there's like adults everywhere and like we all know each other. We all like, you know, take care of each other. We all cook and eat together. Mm. Like it sounds really nice. It does sound nice, actually. I'm like, but you I could th- be single, you could be married, you could be mm. old and young. It could be anything. But this is the thing. I think a lot of like, especially like in, well, at least what I saw in Europe, like when I was living in Spain, I was in a smaller city in Spain, mm. but like the downtown area that I lived in and stuff, like I'd be walking back from the school and they had like these, um, plazas basically right and all of the families like i remember i walked through one and it was kind of awkward because it was like right by the school that i taught at and it was like later in the evening it was like me and my friend were walking to go like get some food or something and we walked through this like little courtyard that was next to the school and there's like a playground and stuff literally i'm not even kidding you my entire class that i taught Aww. was playing there with each other all of the parents were there in the like evening. yeah that's so nice. And a bunch of them came running up to us. It was funny because like I was with my my friend and the bunch of them came up to us and they're like, oh, Dad, Teacher Daniel, Teacher, teacher Daniel. Daniel. And they're like, is that your girlfriend? Who's <laughs> who's this pretty lady with you? <laughs> well, friends, let I me know. tell you about something called homosexuality. <laughs> and literally all the kids were asking me. They were like, oh my God. Oh. I was like, and, and like, it was so cool because like their parents were there. Like That's so there nice. was so many people out and about. It was like, it wasn't that late, like maybe like yeah, seven yeah, o'clock, yeah. but like you could see like everybody was there. That's I was so nice because like how often in in Calgary would you walk past the playground and like the entire grade four class right. would be there after school hours right together, and it was just, just like random night yeah like it wasn't like an event no it was no event nothing god I think and it was like that a lot like a lot of the play places and like plazas and things like that you'd always see like a lot of people there like right. just like communities like I, I don't know I just felt like it was I feel more like of a, Spain has more of that culture yeah they do I think maybe like in bigger cities like Madrid and Barcelona maybe not as yeah, much not as much but that's but like, still so nice yeah but like the smaller towns and cities and stuff yeah definitely and I was like well what, what was it like when you were like young did you have anything like that mm, I went to like after school programs and stuff yeah, but yeah. like but not like that hey no not really like I don't yeah. I don't know like it's it's interesting yeah like, I remember when I was young in Korea, I remember, mm. like, in our neighborhood, like, I would play with the kids, like, in the playgrounds and stuff. Maybe yeah. not to this extent. But, like, oh, I used, yeah. to, I used to do that in my neighborhood, to be fair. Yeah. Yeah. I used to hang out with, like, all the kids in my neighborhoods. Growing up all the time, we would yeah, always yeah, get yeah. together. And, like, we would spend more time, like, going on bike rides and things like that than sure, playing, like... Sure. We did play video games sometimes. Like, that definitely started uh-huh, to come uh-huh. out when I was a kid. But, like... um It wasn't as, like, big as it is now. Like, I would never, like, just spend all day just playing video yeah. games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> That's so nice. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we need more of that. I, I don't agree. know. Like, 
I don't know. That's kind of fucked up. I just think I just think there's there's so many there's you know I almost feel bad for this guy and like honestly in this story with Miku and like I'm like there is some systemic problems that are oh, happening. 100%. If this is what people are resorting to to get out of depression to get out of these things, yeah. like I'm I'm saying it's a good thing that he got out of his depression, but like this is like a very um and again I'm not I'm not coming from a place of judgment. Yeah. I'm coming from a place like conceptually like it's not, we know, like, it's not good to isolate yourself from society. Like, it's yeah. not, like, it's not proven to, like, be, like, great for that person. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, completely by yourself, mm-hmm. like, isolated. Like, and I feel like that's what part of this, you know, fictosexual characters yeah. are doing. <laughs> fictosexual. And I, I feel like it's also, like, these technologies, sometimes you're like, okay, technology can be good and I'm yeah. not against it. But it's like, are they helping or are they hindering? Yeah. And I think... In so many ways, yeah, it can be helpful, but in so many ways, it's just because people start using them again as an escape from reality, an escape from reality and as a substitute mm-hmm. when it's not a substitute, mm-hmm. you know, like people again, watching TikTok thinking, oh, I'm interacting with people, but yeah. really you're not. Yeah. And the more and more these technologies become like basically take over our lives, mm-hmm. you know, it's we're going to start you know, becoming like this without even realizing. Which is scary. Mm -hmm. Like, I think we as a society, like, are going into a very, rapidly, into a very strange place. I know. And I think we, people don't, we don't even fully know, and and I'm sure people that even study this, like, we don't even know what the long-lasting impacts of all this is going to be. And that scares me. I know. Like, we are already seeing, like, anxiety, depression through the fucking roof. Mm -hmm. You know, social anxiety again. Like, why does, why is everyone having social anxiety? Mm Mm-hmm. Because we're not like we're not learning to socialize. I don't know. I think that's a big part of it, though. Like you mm-hmm. said, this is something that you do learn. It's a muscle that you flex. And if you're by yourself at your house interacting with, you know, fictional characters mm-hmm. on a hologram, you're not building social skills. You're not going to get comfortable speaking to real people. You're going to be, again, more and more isolated to yourself and, and trying to, comp- you know. How do they, what are they supposed to do, though? <laughs> I don't know. Like, how do they make friends? Maybe they need to, like, actually... Let's talk about making friends. Yeah. How do they make friends? <laughs> like, try to find stuff outside of this, like, where you can find, you know, hobbies and things, like, where you can meet, you know, other people. Like, I don't know. Do things at work. Like, places that you work should start doing social events and things like that. Like, yeah. meet people that way. Like, it's just, like... Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. know. I don't know what the answer is, guys. I honestly don't. Oh, but it God. does. This kind of these kind of stories, it's more like it more scares me than anything. And I'm mm-hmm. like, actually, like, where are we going as a society? I you know. know. And you're right. Like, maybe this is hyper uh, exposed in like a place like Japan, where there is a lot more of this. But like, that's not to say that that's not happening here as well. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Maybe just not to the same scale, but like it is happening, and we are seeing like social anxiety and all of these things, and it is concerning. Like, it's like you know, what is going to happen in 10, 15 years? Like, where are we going to be? We're just going to all interact with robots. Mm. <laughs> it's like Wally. Mm. That first scene of Wally. Do you remember? I, I don't, seen Wally. I don't think I've seen Wally. I think I saw that first scene where basically like the world's just like a garbage heap. <laughs> yeah. And, he's, like, and then like, there. there's just like a bunch of people, like mm. they're all like, you know, morbidly obese and they're like on like wheelchairs. And I think that's, I think that's Wally. Mm. Anyways. And it's and everyone's just like looking through screens. It's very like oh God. it's very dystopian, but scary guys. Yeah. I'm terrified. This is not fun. <laughs> <laughs> is there a happier story? Harry Styles, my favorite. Mm-hmm. Harry Styles calls expectations to label sexuality outdated. The re- <laughs> lovely Rose. The reason I want to bring this one up is because <laughs> there's a, been an interesting debate on this. And okay. I, I kind of want to get your opinion. Okay. So basically, you know, I, I I do like some of the things that he's saying. Like, I do think, you know, there's this whole pressure on, especially celebrities, to be like, what are you? Who do you like? Who are you dating? <laughs> are you straight? Are you gay? Are you bi? Are you pan? Are you this? You know, like, they want people to fit into certain boxes, right? Right. And he's saying, like, come on, guys. Like, we don't have to label anything. And he's been dressing lately in, like, very, you know, um, androgynous kind of, like, mm. feel to it where it's, like, wearing dresses and doing sure. all this stuff. Um, and people are, like, n- people are really pressuring him to be, like, hey, like, what do you like? Like, what is, what is right. your sexuality? And, like, in the media, he's only ever been public about, you know, dating women, being sure. with women, all that kind of stuff. Um, so on one hand, I 
think, well, first of all, really, it's none of our business, to be honest, yeah. right? And secondly, I do kind of like what message that he's kind of behind. But then on the other hand, there's some people that are like commenting. And I know that this is starting to go on more and more in like okay. in, in certain communities where, you know, heterosexual men or women, they'll do something called like they call it queer baiting. Where basically, oh, they, interesting. Have you heard about this? Yes. Yeah, where they basically put out content that's like, like more, I guess, um, f- sexualized sexu- toward to attract the gay audience. Exactly to attract the gay, the LGBTQ plus audience. Yeah. Um, and they'll do things like that where, and and people are saying like with with Harry Styles or like he's he's doing these extravagant things, right? Like dressing extravagantly and all okay. this stuff, and. And he's dating women all the time, though. So maybe they're, they're, I guess they're assuming, but they're like, is he not just like queer baiting to try to get more of a following? You know, not that he doesn't have a huge following already, but like, is he queer baiting? I mean, so what if he is? I don't know. Like, is that bad to be, you know, I don't, I don't think he's intentionally queer baiting. Mm -hmm. I don't, here's the thing, you know. Okay, let me just read this. It says, don't get me wrong. This is a tweet. You don't need to label. You don't need a label to be valid, but your whole career revolves around queer culture and the active use of LGBTQ plus symbols throughout your music, but refuse to claim any queerness. It's damaging. Your profit, you profit off of, but won't claim the culture as your own. Oh, this is like a cultural uh, appropriation sort of Mm, argument. Yeah. So again, I personally, like, (laughs) I mean, what is my thoughts on this? Like, I never like it never crossed my mind to think, hey, he's specifically like queer baiting. Yeah. From my perspective, because I th- see him like I-, I think I see it more with some people on YouTube and stuff. Like there's definitely a few um, creators on YouTube that I feel like really try to like. You want to name them? Um, What's that guy's name? Oh, fuck. What's his name? It's like I think his name is like I want to say it's like uh, I can't remember. What but- kind of content does he do? He does all sorts of like content. Like it's more like. Is it like sexual? Some of it is. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Where he's like trying to. And he, I think he was like, he collabed with this other like, um, like openly gay YouTuber. And they would like do all videos, like pretending they're a couple and like oh, doing I all see, this I stuff. See. And okay. and a lot of people like he did get backlash on it. And they were like. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I wish I could remember the name of the content okay. creator. But anyway, that kind of stuff where I'm like, they're, they're, they're almost like selling a fake story. Yeah. That's a bit different. Yeah. I'm kind of like, okay, well. I feel well, like that is probably queer baiting maybe. Exactly. Yeah. Like. <clears throat> and then, okay. But like Harry Styles. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Like I think. I don't. I no, I think this is bullshit. I'm yeah. sorry. In my opinion, like I'm not in this community, so maybe I can't speak. Okay. But like to say he's like, I don't think he's like actively out there putting out these like, you know, he just dresses a little bit androgynous. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry. Is he not allowed to dress a little bit androgynous? Yeah. And I think what he's saying about, you know, uh, you know, not having to declare your sexuality. I think that's absolutely valid. Yeah. And the thing is like, <clears throat> Female creator, like female singers are like also kind of like they very much cater to, you know, certain female singers also very much cater to like LGBTQ audiences. Mm -hmm. Do they not? Madonna, fucking Britney Britney Spears. Spears? Yeah. Okay. It's like they are catering to audiences. That doesn't mean they're queer baiting. Yeah. Just because you're catering, you could be potentially catering to an audience, right? Like you could be like, Hey, I am like open to LGBTQ, you know, community. Mm -hmm. Is that not good? Like, look, people just want to be fucking offended at everything. I know. And also I think to myself, like, honestly, like people like, like, like Harry, in some ways, they're kind of being like trendsetters and also being like, yes. even if he if he's gay or not or whatever he chooses to identify as, he's clearly all like whatever he identifies as, he's an ally. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. In terms of like, so if he does happen to be heterosexual, not that it even matters, like the fact that he's doing all this stuff, I wouldn't necessarily label it as queer oh, baiting no. per se. I would say actually he's he's being an ally to, you know, and exactly. this is just my perspective, but like. So like, what do they want him to do yeah. is my question. And mm-hmm. like this one person, I can't take this seriously they says oh saying i'm not really into labels is fine when you're just vibing not when you use androgyny and sexual ambiguity to sell your albums what yeah so basically because he's dressing androgynous like he's simply doing that for profit what if he just likes to dress that way exactly people are arguing oh he's just doing it because he wants to sell more albums does he have to dress like a man because he's a man isn't that kind of like you know anti Mm -hmm. you know lgbtq messaging like exactly 
aren't you for people expressing themselves in different ways no matter what like this is so <laughs> it is kind of crazy now that now that we're talking about it more and i'm thinking about it i'm like you know yeah he's doing this like why like he's dressing a certain way why does it even matter what his sexuality it's not is? like he was like making out with a guy or something yeah. you know what i mean like and even if he was like who cares? Who cares? Like, I don't know. Look at, look at like Britney and Madonna. They fucking made exactly. out on screen. Isn't that queer baiting? Like, I'm sorry. And like, then they did a music video where they were like yes. chasing each other. Or Britney was like tra- chasing Madonna. Um, is that not queer baiting? So apparently you have to be in the LGBTQ community to dress androgynously now. Apparently. Like, you guys, some, not everything has to be an offensive issue. Like, I let know. me just but say. I also think, I also think like if, if you're trying to promote like, um, inclusivity you can't on one hand promote it and then on the other hand condemn uh-huh. somebody for you know doing like dressing androgynous or you know doing that and like again who gives a fuck what his sexual orientation is well, apparently it's fine to dress androgynous just don't sell albums yeah or or <laughs> if you dress androgynous you you 100 have to tell everyone what your sexuality oh is. my god like i honestly cannot because like i guess if he if he claimed he was heterosexual and dressed he's androgynous not to dress like that well he would be allowed to but then now he's no longer it's no longer ambiguous what his sexuality is like what the fuck does it even matter <laughs> like we're literally like, I, like you really think that if he said that he was heterosexual mm. that somehow that's gonna be that he's going to have a decline in album sales or people are not going to take him seriously anymore. Mm-hmm. Like, I really don't think so. I don't think so either. Like, no one's like, oh my God, Harry, I think you you might be gay. So that's why I'm buying your albums. Like, I don't feel like that's happening. No. I mean, <laughs> I'm a gay man and I've never bought anyone in a single one of his albums. And does that make me want to listen to his songs more because he's gay? Or not, not like, because he's... Not because he's gay, sorry. Because he's like, it's un- unsuspicious or not... I, like, yeah. nobody knows what his sexuality is? No. <laughs> Literally, I'll listen to his music if I like the song. Like, otherwise, move on, you know? Oh, my God. I can't believe this reaction, but also, I know. I believe. Again, this is a symptom of you are spending too much time on the internet, my friends. Mm. You are not spending time in reality, okay? Yeah. Like, oh. And my argument, too, is a lot of people in entertainment, like a lot of guys and girls, they dress very extravagantly because they're performers. Do you know what I mean? They wear really random stuff that like, I would never be caught dead in wearing like walking in the streets because we just wouldn't, but like they're entertainers. So like you, like there's a picture of like him there and I'm like, that looks like something any entertainer would wear. Do you know what I mean? Like like, entertainers wear like crazy shit. Yeah. Like look at all the girl, like girls wearing crazy wigs and all this guys wear makeup. Like it happens. And again, I thought it was a good thing that men are now also like expressing themselves. And Mm -hmm. even if they're straight or gay or whatever, like, you know, they're dressing in ways that are, you know, maybe traditionally more feminine. Yeah. And now it's just kind of ambiguous. Isn't that what we want? <laughs> Isn't that what you wanted? See, I would just wish that, again. Yeah. As a society, I wish we just like moved away what from. What do you want? I know. What do you want? <laughs> God damn. What do you want people? It's like we want everyone to accept, you know, we want everyone to have gender mm. fluid, fluidity or whatever. Yeah. But if you're straight, you can't be wearing that shit. I know. I think, you know what the funny thing is? I think I talked uh, about this in the podcast before. Uh-huh. Um, but this is just one isolated example and I'm sure people won't come at me for this, <laughs> what is but it? like, I do feel like a lot of, uh, communities, not just LGBTQ plus, sure. but a lot of communities are asking for, you know, um, acceptance, understanding, they want inclusivity, all of this kind of stuff. But then sometimes when it's on the flip, the flip mm-hmm, side, mm-hmm. they themselves are not an inclusive, right. um, you know, community, like and a, a perfect example was like, here in Calgary, which, you know, doesn't have the best gay scene anyway, uh-huh. but this was years ago. And I went up with, a, I, I was part of a club at UFC that was like for LGBTQ plus people, met some really cool people there. Me and a couple of the people went out for, went out to one of the gay bars here and <laughs> went with a couple girls who were both like, not that it even mattered, but they were like lesbian, bi, whatever, Sure. but happened to be like dressing, you know, they were like you know, wearing heels and makeup yeah. and all of this kind of stuff. And I'm not even kidding you. No word of a lie. We get to the, the front of the line. So there's a line to get in. And the bouncer was like, for me, like, no worries. You can get in. No problem. They, they didn't get in. Well, he was like giving them a hard time. He was like, oh, you guys are wearing heels. No heels and no purses. 
Oh my god! As there was like drag queens walking at the top there with mm-hmm. heels and purses, so I like I got really mad and I was like, "What do you mean no heels and purses?" Like, there's a fucking drag queen right there with a fucking heels and purse. I know. Like, what are you talking about? And he's like, "Well, um, I can't remember what he said." And I was like, "I want to talk to the manager. Like, this is yeah. ridiculous." And luckily, like he, I think the manager was up there or something, and he was like, oh, "I'll just let them in or whatever." But I was like, "How can you promote? Like, how can you be like because they're like inclusive and you want people to be part of that community, but yet." you would do that as well. Yeah. You know and what I mean? And it's not even them being like, and I mean, they are lesbian, so they are actually part of the community, but yeah. even if they weren't, yeah. it's not like they're like, oh, I'm part of the LGBTQ community. Of course you're not. But like, you should be, you know, like, are they not allowed to go to this club? Like, I don't know. Yeah, it's like a flip. It's almost like a reverse. Yeah. And then some people might argue, well, that's the dress code. I'm like, well, not really. No, you know what I mean? that's bullshit. Yeah. If they were drag queens, they would have been let in. Exactly. Well, this mm-hmm. is this is the thing, right? So it's like little things like that where I'm like, okay, well, you can't advocate for inclusivity and yet on the flip I side, know. be like not inclusive yourself. Like, yeah. there's something... I, what is it? Hypocrit- it's so hypocritical, yeah, right? Yeah. So uh, I don't know. And I, I, I think like this is kind of a, a, um, a good example of that is the fact that, you know, I mean, and I think the, like, honestly, the fact that people are talking about Harry Styles like this and, you know, he had that big scandal about the dress cover uh-huh, on Vanity uh-huh. Fair or something yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. right? And people are talking about this and like it's promoting this like image of like, hey, it's okay to like be, you can be very successful and dress very like however you want, you know? And not have to tell people what your sexuality is. Exactly. Maybe he just doesn't feel comfortable. Like people are so crazy. I know. Maybe he just doesn't want to put it out there because as soon as he says, I'm straight or I'm gay or whatever, it's going to be all over the headlines. Like just put yourself in that position, right? Like yeah. if I was a famous person and I was, you know, and people were constantly fucking asking mm. me over and over again, A, I would just get sick and tired of people asking oh, yeah. me. So I probably just wouldn't even want to say it. Mm. I just be like fuck like why does it matter i make music like fuck off yeah but then also like i would be afraid as soon as i said it it's gonna be all over the headlines yeah and i don't want that like that's weird exactly well and speaking <laughs> speaking of kind of mm-hmm. basically getting sick of people hounding you and all of this kind of stuff it kind of ties into our next story Rose. oh god damn there'd be another story there, this be our last story of the day okay what would it be so <laughs> i actually <laughs> i've heard many stories <gasps> would it be about Mike Tyson. I don't know if you've heard about Mike oh, Tyson. I've heard about this, but yeah. I haven't read into this. So what I've heard, guys. So Mike Tyson, he's like a famous um, boxer, I believe. And he kind of rose to fame. And he, like over the years, I think he was known to like have a temper and like, you know, not be like, you know, anyway. Right. But I think he's like really worked on that. And what I've heard is like the last couple of years, like he's he's been in some situations where he's actually been like, you know, quite calm and collective. Okay. okay. So, Again? Straight man being calm and cool. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? If he has a history of, you know, yeah. anger issues. It's great. kind of a, yeah. And anyway, so the title of this is, I guess, I guess recently Mike Tyson was on a plane and uh, he repeatedly punched a man on a plane and oh it makes his face, you know, bloody. Obviously, he's a boxer. He knows how to, oh how to hit Oh, my God. Can you imagine being fucking punched by Mike Tyson? God no, damn. No, I can't. But the story kind of takes a little bit of a, not a turn, but basically... Um, Initially, Mike had got Mike had, had gotten onto the plane, and there was, I guess, some fans on the plane. They were like super excited to see him. Sure. They're like, "Oh my god!" And initially, he like posed, took some pictures with them. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So like, you could tell that he was being, you normal. know, normal. Uh-huh. And then I think he basically was like, "Okay, well, now I'm, you know, I've took my pictures with you. Like, I want to sit down or whatever." Sure. And apparently, the the um the guy that got punched in the face, he was very intoxicated, and was like hounding him like he was like sure. constantly hounding him like whispering in like whispering in his ear was he sitting next to him I, mike was sitting in front of him oh i see yeah and he kept being like i think he just wanted to interact with him he was like super excited but he like didn't like he just wouldn't leave him alone right and eventually mike snapped and turned around and punched him in the face a few times god damn is he suing him i have no idea dude i know there's the guy See, you can see at the beginning, he, he oh, posed okay. and Mike Tyson was like, okay with it. He like, you know, whatever. And then... Let's see his face. Hold on. Let's see more of his face. The bloody face. Okay. It doesn't look as bad as I thought. Mm. I thought it would look super bad. Mm-hmm. I mean, um, he looks very sad. <laughs> so so yeah. Mike gave him a warning though. He was like, he was very patient with him initially. And then um, eventually uh, Tyson okay. turned around and just told the guy, he's like, just chill like leave uh-huh. me leave me alone basically and when the guy didn't that's when he decided to throw some punches did he get kicked off were, were, were they in the air yeah i believe so dude so i mean 
violence is never the answer. It's not, but at the same time as well, like, <laughs> do you think it's justified? I don't think it's justified. <laughs> I think what, you know what I, again, like we don't know what it's like to be in those situations. Like imagine right. getting hounded everywhere you go. Like eventually right, you just be like, snap. fuck the fuck right. off. You know what I mean? Like you would actually, you would snap. Like, I mean, there's a lot of famous people that don't punch people. That's true. I mean, what I, what I would hope I would have done in that situation. I don't know. I would probably yell. Yeah. Like before you punch someone. Okay. There's a line. Here's the thing. He went from chill man Mm. to punching him multiple times in the face. Yeah. There are many steps that you could take before you get to the punching. Okay. You could just yell at him and be like, can you fuck off? Yeah. (laughs) Or you could even, you could even get the flight attendants involved and say, Hey, do you mind moving me somewhere uh else? Like I can't deal with this guy. Exactly. Yeah. Like like, they have duct tape on the flight. They could duct tape (laughs) the man. We know that they have duct tape from, (laughs) from other angry passengers. Um, So punching, especially when you are, you know, Mike Tyson. Yeah. And you could probably fucking throw a punch. Yeah. Okay. Probably not a good idea. I know. But again, we don't know. It's not the answer. Okay. It's it's not. I can, I can, of course it's annoying. Of course that's annoying. You know, but like he clearly still has a lot of anger issues. If that was his, his go to, his go to. Well, and I think honestly, like the part of this story, what really like blows my mind though, is like how shitty it would be to be a flight attendant and have to deal with this stuff <laughs> up in the air. Be so entertaining. I mean, it would, but at the same time, it's like at least with like a bar fight and stuff, you can, kick, <laughs> you can kick them out. Or if it's like, if there's like a fight on a bus, you can like pull the bus over and get them out. You know what I mean? Sh- sure. When you're up in the air, like, it's like, okay, cool. Like we have to deal with this for another six hours until we get to our destination. <laughs> like, uh, well, I mean, it's not every day that someone is punching someone. That's in very the face. true. That's very and true. And it's not every day that it's Mike Tyson throwing the punch. That's very true. <laughs> So, but man, like, yeah, it would be, I think, yeah, it would be very interesting and also very stressful job for oh sure. God, like I um, can't even imagine. I know dealing with fucking and people when they're flying, they are like in a different headspace. Oh, like, they are. It's like they're all like people are stressed. Mm. They're angry. Like they're extra like oh, on and the they, edge. And they just do the like stupidest things sometimes. And I'm just like, <laughs> oh my God, people like everyone's extra annoyed on a yeah. flight. Like you're not enjoying yourself. Most yeah. of the time. And it's like, it's like little things. It's like, and I'm sure like, you know, but like. You know when like the plane lands and they're like everybody just like take your turn <laughs> we sit down until we turn the light off and everyone's like whoa everyone's standing up grabbing their bags like, I was on one flight where the flight attendant actually had to get onto the speaker because we were still like taxiing or whatever they call yeah, it yeah, to get yeah, to yeah. the, the yeah. destination and she was like guys if no one sits down right now like we're gonna yeah. stop this plane and we'll just sit here God damn. and I was like holy fuck <laughs> and then everyone did there was like, still a few people and then you always have that one person that like grabs their bag and then tries to like get to the front oh and push God. past everyone. I'm like, dude, you literally are going to get out of the plane like five minutes or yeah. faster than everyone else. Like I know. calm the fuck down. Like unless you have a connecting flight and usually if your connecting flight is that short of time, they'll announce it and they'll let you go first. I've been on planes where they've been like everybody that's on the connecting flight to X, Y, Z keep like, you, you know, go first. you go first right. and everyone else, please stay seated. And a few people get up and they just like run out. Yeah. But like, come on. <laughs> I know people are like extra impatient. Oh, it just Uh drives me crazy. I'm just like, honestly, I just feel like I do feel like flying brings out people's like worst behavior because it's like, it is stressful. Yeah. And I don't know. It's like, it's just not, it's not fun. No. You know, like it's fun sometimes depending on where you're going, but half the people are not going to anywhere fun. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I, after like, I don't, I really, I used to hate flying, but I've gotten used to it now and I actually don't mind it. Like I don't mind being on a flight. Like it's, it depends. Like it depends on like, where I'm going, I guess. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I don't mind it either. Like it's not, it's not horrible, but it can be stressful. Like, you know, depending on, yeah. And some people have a very low stress tolerance, you know That's what I'm true. saying? And you also know, like, like Mike Tyson, it sounds yeah. like. <laughs> and some people, like you said, like, well, not like you said, but like some people, they have a, I found out like some people have issues flying because they're not in control. Like, you oh. know, they're not in control of the vehicle. Like, you know, when you drive, right. But when you're on a plane, somebody else is driving the aircraft. So you're at the mercy of someone else. So it, even though the chances of you dying on a flight is very low compared to in a exactly. car, you're more likely to get in a car accident than a plane accident. Much more likely, which makes sense because there's less people actually driving in the air, you know, it's true. So yeah. And people that are, uh, it's a lot more regulated in the yeah. air. And, um, yeah, cars are just, uh, you know, they're dangerous, man. Yeah, they are. I mean, the amount of people like texting and driving and, I know. you know, I've, I, I remember like years ago, I was like going down Deerfoot, which is like a big like center, like big highway. highway. And there was a man, <laughs> I'm not even kidding you, eating like pho 
He had it like on his knees like this. He must have been on cruise control or something. How with, are like, you eating pho? With like chopsticks and it. I was like, what is going on? I this is was just he a... Asian. <laughs> no comment. Come on, Asian man. We already have the stereotype. I know. I can't believe he was. E- you know what? I'm a little impressed. I know. Part of me was like, that is a goddamn skill. Yeah. And then part of me was like, if you hit any bump, you have like oh boiling my, hot literally water. Literally, though. Going to go in your crotch. And. Like, pho. I, like, I cannot even imagine eating pho while driving. Like, it, is that even enjoyable for you? I, I just couldn't believe it. I'm, that, that's got to be a record. I mean, what, to be like, that. Get, that's, get a wrap. I know. <laughs> get a Vietnamese sub. I know. Okay? Why, why are you going to get a noodle soup? <laughs> I was just shocked. I was like, just just get to your destination and just eat it when you get there. Like, uh, People are fucking crazy. I know. Okay, but I actually want to ask you, though. Yeah. Have you been following Johnny Depp and Amber Heard? Case? Oh, my God. So I haven't been following it whatsoever. <laughs> but I happened to like see this thing come up on my YouTube that was like, watch this like, psychiatrist destroy yes! this Did you lawyer. Watch it? So I started watching part of it. And it was like, it was quite funny. Like, it was like... <gasps> you guys, oh, my God. We need to talk about this. Maybe f- next week. Yeah, I feel like I need to get caught up on it because I have no idea oh what's God. going on. Like when I was when I got sick, I was like I delved into the rabbit hole. Of course, like you did. I could for the first like couple <laughs> nights I couldn't sleep at night. Yeah, because I was like stuffy and sick. So I was like I just started like watching like random clips from the trial. Yeah. Whole, if you guys don't know, which I'm sure a lot of you do, it's like so fucking highly publicized. It's yeah. crazy. How, who decides they're gonna publish publish these like trials? I don't know because you know when it's like a murder trial and stuff. Yeah, like you don't see people on the stand. Like on posted on YouTube, you know what I mean? Like really, always, never. What about like OJ Simpson? That was fucking publicized. But did you actually see him? Like, yeah, they had. There was like a scene where he. I think I don't know. I think so. Guys, let me know. This was like a long time ago. I think there it depends. Like on, it depends on the nature of the case. Scene where he's maybe? like he couldn't fit the glove in his hand. Do you know the OJ Simpson story? I can't remember that. <laughs> Basically, one of the reasons, one of the big reasons why he like won, yeah. like as in he wasn't convicted, was like there was like some kind of glove. Okay, it was like this black leather glove, Mm -hmm. and then like he was he was proving that the glove wasn't his, and he like put it on, and like it it wouldn't go into his hand, and that was like a big famous like scene. Mm. So I think that was like, (gasps) yeah, I think that was like publicized. I'm not sure, but it was the trial definitely was televised. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you're saying that in murder trials they they usually don't. I don't recall them being that like where you actually like see what's going on in the courtroom. They might have like they might have sketches and stuff of the people. Well, it depends on the trial. That's what I'm thinking because depending on the trial, they don't publicize or they do. Yeah. Like some of the really high profile ones, like I'm pretty sure like Casey Anthony, that one was like televised. Maybe you're right. I yeah. Don't know. I, think I wonder what constitutes on, yeah. like it being, cause I know for sure some aren't. Oh yeah, for sure. Like yeah. some definitely are not, but who decides these things? Yeah. I wonder if I it's like, know. I wonder if it's like the victims are under age or something. They, like, they don't, don't publicize I don't know. them. Or like, do they like, do people involved, do they get to decide? This is a very good question. <laughs> I need to know, but oh my God, you guys, if you haven't been following it, basically Johnny Depp, and Amber Heard. The, so I guess Johnny Depp and Amber Heard were married for like a short period of time, I think. And basically, long story short, essentially what happened was after they got divorced, Amber Heard kind of like accused Johnny Depp publicly of um, like ab- abusing her. Okay. Like domestic Sorry, say, Sorry, say it again. So basically, long story short, yeah. uh, do you know the kind of story? Not at all. So basically, Amber Heard and Johnny Depp, they were married. Okay. Yeah. And I guess Amber Heard is like a actress. Yeah, she is. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so they were married for like not that long, maybe like a year or, you know, I'm sure they were together for a little bit longer, but they were married. And then after they got divorced, I guess Amber Heard, sorry if I'm getting these details wrong, by the way, but Mm -hmm. I guess Amber Heard kind of like, you know, insinuated very strongly that Johnny Depp abused her during the relationship. Okay. Like she would come out with like, like bruising and like, I don't know. Like she basically... Mm -hmm like heavily insinuated i don't know if she like said it but she heavily insinuated that johnny depp um there was like some domestic violence going on okay Okay. and then because of that johnny depp's reputation kind of like went to shit because obviously you know hollywood johnny depp is very like highly regarded as like a very you know famous man right yeah and then he lost a bunch of brand like he lost a bunch of deals like he lost a bunch of movies they took him off of pirates of the caribbean yeah it was like a big deal and then it came out later on, like st- like evidence started coming out mm. that basically it wasn't like, basically it started coming out that Amber Heard could have been lying and could have been manipulating the situation. So like there's all these audio recordings that came out, like Johnny Depp basically was like, I've never done this. Like I've never hit her. I've never abused her. Yeah. And then so basically 
he's now suing her. The reason why there's a trial is because he's suing her for defamation. Oh, uh, right, so right, it's a right. defamation lawsuit. So now, like, they're trying to prove that, like, he never abused her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that she basically, like, fucked him over. Yeah. He's suing her for $50 million. He should just go on OnlyFans. I was going to say, <laughs> pull a bad baby and make $50 million a year. God damn, you know, Johnny Depp, he's, you know. He still got it. Yeah. He, anyway. Oh God, um, damn. That's crazy. So that's the crazy shit. Yeah. And the crazy shit is like f- seeing all this stuff. Like mm. I've, I've watched like a bunch of testimonies. And shit. Wasn't there one comment where she's like admitted to like shitting in his bed or something? Yes. So that was like one of the crazy <laughs> testimonies. Basically like, so I don't think she's taken the stand yet. Yeah. Or maybe she is. She, no, I think she's soon. scheduled to very I think shortly. So. Um, people are fucking like, going wild over this okay but i guess one of the things that she did like johnny depp was testifying and then he was basically like yeah like she basically defecated on the bed and then there was like human feces on the bed that was just one of the crazy things could you imagine if somebody you were seeing decided to defecate on your bed i cannot even i I would be like okay like this is done like you just shit on my bed like you Uh fucking asshole like it is absolutely insane yeah um and basically everyone that's like testifying it seems very like it's it's pointing to johnny being the person on the right like he's the one that was like the victim that's what i heard like i've heard that it's like really coming out that you know he was the one that was abused essentially yeah and they're saying that i guess you know uh, yeah, that's what I was I was seeing from, uh-huh. from the limited Yeah, so exposure. like no one is like taking Amber's side. Basically, yeah. everyone's like Johnny Depp is like, you know. Yeah. Um, so, but apparently it's really hard to win a, uh, a defamation case. Really? Because apparently, because I mean, if, I guess if you think about it, you have to prove. So it's, it's not enough to prove that there was no, how do I say? No evidence isn't evidence. As in, if there's no evidence of Johnny Depp abusing her that doesn't mean necessarily that he didn't abuse her that yeah makes yeah, sense. yeah i see what you mean so i guess that's very very difficult to prove mm. um so they would have to prove that i think but even though even if he's not gonna win um i think his reputation is gonna it's already restored essentially yeah, it's gonna improve <laughs> exactly yeah and i mean maybe he doesn't win win fully but maybe he gets a bit of money you know what i mean maybe exactly so maybe he doesn't get the 50 the million maybe exactly. maybe amber and her team are gonna decide to settle out of court yeah and just yeah, say yeah, hey exactly. we'll give Who you knows? like 10 million oh, god damn to shut the hell up oh god damn it'd be crazy as hell god it, anyway it's fucking wild yeah so did but we it, find out any information no i'm oh. i'm not gonna i'll <laughs> we'll, we'll i'm gonna look into yeah. it though to find out like what it it means or what what basically constitutes or how how what so how some of these trials are so like you know you can see everything that's going on versus yeah, yeah, yeah. some of them you can only see the sketches you know what i mean? know Cause remember yeah. some famous ones yeah, will yeah, just have like just a, sketch, a sketch but you can hear the voice sometimes like they will be like yeah. the voice you know what stuff. they can they do televise trials i know because i remember seeing some older trials like maybe not of celebrities yeah but like do you remember the Me- menendez bro- brothers do you know that trial no i don't think so there, i think it's Men- menendez there's these two brothers that were like this was probably in the 90s or something mm. or maybe the 2000s these two uh brothers that were Basically, they killed their parents, essentially. Yeah. And the trial, like, and it turned out later on, they were, like, basically saying that they were, like, abused all their lives. Mm-hmm. Anyways, that was, like, fully televised. Like, you, yeah. I, I remember seeing them, like, on the stand. They were, like, crying and stuff. So, yeah. they can fully televise those things. Yeah, but I wonder what constitutes what, what can make I have a no trial. idea. I think if, like... Like, like I th- there's enough press, like, maybe? I think also, though, it does depend. Like, I, th- I feel like if the victims were underage... Oh they yeah, don't yeah, yeah, televise yeah. It. yeah. That would make sense. Yeah. Or if if the even if the people going on the stand are underage, yeah. maybe they wouldn't televise that either. Yeah. Um, I don't know, guys. If you know, let us know. Yeah, let us know in the comment section below, um, and let us know if you're following this fucking trial. Oh it's yeah, fucking wild. Apparently, it's like Rose's pastime now. <laughs> it's she got wild. You got to get on the YouTube and watch some more videos, it's fucking Rose. Wild. <laughs> maybe I do as well. Now that I have internet in my place, so. <laughs> the number of times Amber Heard's lawyers say objection is mm. like every sentence objection, objection, <laughs> objection. <laughs> <laughs> well, they were just saying like the psychiatrist basically owned this lawyer. Uh, the psychiatrist was like fucking bomb. Yeah. Okay? She, she was, was just yeah. like incorrect. That's not what happened. Yeah. Um, this is what happened. And everyone's like praising her for like staying so calm in the situation. Yeah. She was like explaining what happened. And then basically the lawyer was trying to discredit her. Yeah. That's basically what she was yeah. doing, which is very annoying. Right. Yeah. This is what um, they do. This is what they yeah. do. Like the whole game, like the, not the game, the whole thing of going to a courtroom it is a game. Is a, basically. It's a game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like it's like the thing that's really sad is like, this is why a lot of people are hesitant to sometimes come forward with stuff because like a lot of the time what will happen in, in a case is 
you know, your credibility is the, the lawyer will try to get yeah. rid of your credibility. They'll try to like, you know, undermine you. All they try of this to stuff. confuse you. Yeah. They try to confuse you all of this stuff. And it is a game like, it's you know, so fucked actually. Yeah. Like the whole yeah. process is like a little bit like, Oh my God. Yeah, they dig up everything like yeah. irrelevant things. And often, and sometimes they, they don't let you use certain pieces of evidence in court. Yeah. Like it's so like fucked. Yeah, it is weird. They'll be like, Oh yeah. Like certain stuff will be omitted from yeah. court. Like, and, like certain things that are like quite important mm. to, you know, to, to tell the jury, but like, oh no, we, let, we can't talk about that. Yeah. I don't know. It's all fucked. It's crazy. <laughs> and on that positive note, guys, we hope that you enjoyed this week's episode. As always, um, leave us a comment in the comment section below if you're watching this on YouTube. Show us some love there. Yeah. Give us give us a thumbs up if you like this video. Um, and don't forget to hit subscribe. Yeah. Um, also, if you are listening to us on your favorite podcast platform, don't forget to hit that follow. That way you'll get updated when there is new content, which is every week. Yeah. Um, and what else, Rose? <laughs> and uh, follow us on Patreon. Yeah. Or join our Patreon. Yeah. It's patreon.com slash the savage podcast for as little as $3 a month. You can get all of those perks, okay? So bonus episode every single month yeah. only for the patrons. And of course, every episode ad-free, mm-hmm. week earlier than everyone else. And you can join our little community. And, and access to the legacy content. And really. access to the legacy content, you guys. <laughs> Definitely check it out. Links are all in the description or yep. the show notes. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for listening. Thanks, guys. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.